Welcome back. Well, recently, the Surgeon General has called attention to loneliness. Yeah, he's calling it a public health crisis with depression and personality disorders on the rise. Here to tell us what we can do about it is Sarah Lowry. She's from HCA Midwest. Sarah, first off, welcome. It's great Good to morning. see you Good here. Good morning. Thank you. So why do we find ourselves so lonely. I imagine it, the pandemic has something to do with oh, it. Most definitely. Yeah. It did not help anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that we need to uh, acknowledge is that social media and the internet is not inherently good or bad, but depending upon the person, it could drive the loneliness because we immerse ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, the percentage of people that they find to be most lonely is actually young adults and teenagers. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because they immerse themselves in this superficial at times yes. world yeah. and so we forget that there are people out here and those of, of us who are introverts it's hard to do that anyway which means i prefer to be in a small group or with my own group or by myself right so how can we do that connect with people not only in the social media atmosphere in a healthy way but also in the community outside of our home or in our home mm -hmm. with actual in-person connections. And are you seeing this impact younger people differently than it is older people? Because I know there's a big trend with that as well. Um, I think it just manifests gradually in a different way, yes, but similar at the same time. So older generation people, it directly impacts um, memory. It, it the lonelier, the higher rate of loneliness it, that the individual rates themselves as, it directly relates to cognition and memory. Mm -hmm. Up to 50% mm -hmm. of people who are lonely in the up, upper age demographic find themselves having memory loss more frequently. Wow. Teenagers, we might see that in irritability, pushing people away. No, mom and dad, I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. I want to be in my room. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, and we also have to acknowledge that every kid and every teenager is different. Sure. Right. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. So I'm curious. Uh, how do you um, encourage people to make connections, mm -hmm. um, what, what, for regardless of what age? Sure. Um, I think we also first acknowledge that the pandemic purposefully pushed us to, uh, away, and, and those of us who um, naturally don't like to connect, it didn't help, right? And so we need to acknowledge first that it's okay to be scared to do so, to um, be able to force ourselves to make connections. So one thing that I, I really recommend is volunteering or finding activities outside of the home that you can do. Um, also, one positive from the pandemic that we have seen is the increase of actual services online, like talk therapy, talk space, that is an app on your phone. So you can connect with a real person to have a real conversation um, for whatever reason, whether it just be to be able to connect mm -hmm. and not leave your home. But there are a lot of opportunities in this world that we can um, relate to. There are um, volunteer opportunities. There are activities that, like uh, sports, um, working out, go to a gym, yep. things that make us connect gradually. I think is directly related to us feeling better and reducing this the statistics of loneliness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how can someone keep that so they can continue this trend if, in case their you know loneliness is getting out of control? Great question. Um, I think first, if if you feel like you're lost and you don't know where to start, reaching out to a professional is is one of the very first things. Whether it be your direct care provider, like a like a physician, a therapist. Like I said, there are a multitude of resources, whether it be online or in person in the community. Um, asking for help. Yeah. I think one thing though, who are who's already in your circle? reaching out to your people. Do you feel comfortable doing so? Whether it just be, hey, can we play cards for 30 minutes? Can we go get coffee? Um, trying to connect and foster those relationships is huge. If you don't have that many people in your life, asking for help for sure, but also going to the grocery store, just smiling at people, making that connection, eye contact and smiling. That's a small step to, to drive connection in our brains because we are social beings, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and isolation is, is, is not a good place to be. Uh, right. Is isolation, you don't want, to, you don't want that to, to linger on. For sure. Yeah. And for the, most of us, for the most of us, we, we do not thrive in isolation. Yeah. The small percentage of people enjoy it, for sure. Each of us is different. But for the most, we need that social connection. All right, we got to go. Sarah, it's been great to see you. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Very Thank important you topic. I appreciate uh, it. Mental Health Awareness Month here in the month of May. So, Sarah, thanks again. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. It. Not a problem. All right.